Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2014 Hyundai Sonata. We're going to be changing the front brake pads and the rotors at the same time. Uh, the reason we're going to do that is because they're actually right down to the indicator where it's touching into it. You can hear a loud pitched squealing noise coming from this right front. So that's the one we're going to do. We already did the left front and now we're going to continue over here. So I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to show you what kind of tools you're going to need to do this job and then we're going to go ahead and get this, this job done. I am going to show you a trick that, I, that I've learned to, uh, to get the, the screws out that actually hold, I'll show you in a second, the screws that actually hold the rotor in place right here. Uh, we, we have a trick that we use to get these off and if you just follow my advice with this it'll take you two minutes and they'll come right off, you won't have a problem. Um, as you know if you strip these out you're going to wind up having to drill out that broken screw and that drilling any broken bolt out is never fun. So, uh, alright, let's get over here. I'll show you what you're going to need and uh, then we're going to get started. Okay, this is an example of what kind of tools you're going to be needing. You're going to need a ratchet with a fairly long handle to give you the leverage to break things loose. Um, the socket that I'm using right there is a 17 millimeter and this one is a 14 millimeter. We are going to use a, a hanger like this to hold the caliper up and out of the way so it's not dangling by the hose. We're going to use a, a very thin uh, wrench like this to hold the, uh, the slide pin so they don't rotate. We're going to need a, a file possibly to clean off any kind of rust, miscellaneous sockets, a hammer. This is the driver that I'm telling you you're going to need to get those screws out. When you see what I do, it's, it's very, very simple. We're going to need a tool like this to actually push the pistons back into the bore because on this particular one you normally see me push this in with this type of a pry bar but there's no way to get in there on this one, it's very tight. Um, a grinder like this to clean off the hub so that we get all the rust off of it. Of course new brake pads and a new rotor, some th synthetic, synthetic brake grease and we're going to use a driver like this to actually get those screws out without stripping them. You can use a regular screwdriver, which I will show you, but I'm going to use the driver here just to make it a little bit easier. All right, um, okay, let's get over there. I'll get started on it, and we'll, we'll get this job done. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to take these screws out right here. And the way you do that is you take a driver like this. If you don't have this, you can use a... Uh, an extension from a ratchet if you don't have this. You put it on the on the screw like that. Let me just show you real quick. This I'm just using as a screwdriver as you can tell. But you can see they don't come out. They're real tight. So if you force it, you're gonna wind up stripping those screws out. But you take this driver, you put it on top, and you hit it fairly cert fairly hard. see that they actually come right out now without a problem. Don't lose this because we are going to need to reuse these again. Right. So if you do it just that way you're going to see it's fairly easy to get them out. Uh, if, like I said, if you strip them you're going to have a problem. No big deal though if you do strip these out you just get in here with a drill and you drill through the center here and you remove these bolts and you can take the rotor off. But take the extra time, you'll be very happy that you did. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this, uh, this caliper right here. We're going to take out this 14 millimeter bolt and this 14 millimeter bolt right here. Once you break them loose, you can take them out by hand. They're usually very, uh, very loose. Okay. Now we can take the uh, caliper off. Sometimes they stick a little bit. You just have to persuade it, just like that, to get it to move. I'm going to take this, I'm going to show you this right now. Let's see if you can see up here. Okay, you see that this piston is pushed out here? It needs to be pushed back into the bore all the way. So what you do, 
you could take a tool like this. This tool, there's a lot of different tools out there. This is the one that I've happened to be using since when I first started, a long time now. You take the uh, brake pad and you put it in here like this. And you put the other brake pad in like this. This goes in the middle, just like that. And then you'll turn the piston. See up here. You turn this just like that. And you can see it pushes the piston back in. Now you don't need a lot of force to push that back in. You just turn it and it goes in nice and slow. Just like that. Now it's pushed in all the way. We're going to just take this tool back off. Now one thing you never want to do is you never want to let this caliper hang by the hose itself because you can do damage to the hose. So what we do is just take a piece of wire like this, hook it through here, and connect it up on top of the strut like that, and you can get it out of your way. And now we'll take our, our uh, caliper mounting bracket off. Now these can be a little bit tight. If you can't break it loose with this type of ratchet, you can use a breaker bar to break it loose. But most of the time they do come right out. Now if you had an air gun, obviously you can use the air gun. See if we can turn this a little bit. Maybe you can see a little better. And you probably heard me say this to you a million times, but don't lose these bolts. You're going to need to use these over again, so don't drop them or, or misplace them. Make sure you keep your washer on there. Okay, we're going to come back to this in just a minute. Remember I was telling you about that sensor that I was touching and making noise? That's the sensor right there. And you can see where it is up against the, uh, the, uh, the brake pad. It's just as thin as the sensor. So we're going to put this off to the side right now, and we will come, ba come back to this in a minute. But for now, we're going to take this rotor off. Now, as you can see, that rotor is really tight on there. Different ways you can get this rotor off. This rotor, we're changing it so it really doesn't matter if I hit the face of it or not, which is what I'm going to do. But if it's really tight and you can't get it off, you can get in. Let me show you. You can get in here with a very long pry bar like this, put it up against this mounting ear up in the back right here that holds the caliper in place, a caliper bracket, and then you hold this like this. You take your hammer, you pull it, well, this one came right off. But you would pull on it, it would pop off. If it didn't pop off, you could hit it here with the hammer while you're prying it here and it'll pop right off. All right, so now we're gonna take this off. 
and we'll talk about this rotor in just a minute. Now, let me just turn this back so you can see what I'm talking about here. You see the face of this, this you see the face right here where this hub is? All of this rust that's in here needs to come out. If this rust doesn't come out and you put a new rotor on there, you're going to wind up with a pulsating brake pedal. So take the time to uh, clean that rust out of there. Now, you can do it two, two or three different ways. You can get in here with a disc like this, and you can clean it up. You could use a scraper to clean it up. You can use emery cloth to clean it up. Whatever means you have to do it, you want to make sure that all of the rust that's on here is off. I'm going to use this because it's easier. Now, I can already tell somebody um, Somebody actually overfilled this master cylinder because it's leaking all over the floor right here. I, um, you want to actually have a bucket underneath your car so you don't make a mess on your ground. And we're going to clean this up with this wheel. And once this is cleaned up, then we'll, we'll come back and uh, we'll put that rotor back on. Okay, I just want to explain about the, uh, the rotors now before we put them back on. You want to put them side by side to make sure that they're the same height as the one that previously came off. You'd be surprised how many times the parts stores give you the wrong ones. Put them side by side and make sure they're the same height, exact same height. And then you take them and you lay them face to face like this. And you make sure that the rotor is the exact same as the, uh, the other one. All right? And what we do is before we go and put this back on the car, you can see all that oily stuff on here. You want to clean that off. So what you do is you spray it with some brake cleaner just like that. Just take a rag and you clean it all off. Doesn't have to be absolutely spotless, but you want to try to get as much of it off as you possibly can. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on this side here. Spray it down and then you just wipe it off. A little bit of grease is not a big deal. It'll just smoke, but you want to try to clean it off the best you can. All right. Okay, let's put this back on the car now. Okay, now we'll take the, uh, the new rotor and we'll put it back on. You want to make sure that when you put it on that these two screw holes here line up with each other. Now you can use a regular screwdriver. You'll see I'm using this because this is the same as a screwdriver. And you can just turn it in. And you want to catch both of them before you tighten it up all the way, you want to catch both of them in there. Now, you don't have to do this at home, but I do here at the shop. Make these as tight as you can. I'm just locking them in place. All right. And now the rotor is finished. I'm going to turn this so you can see a little better. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to... Remember we talked about this... Uh, this um, mounting bracket. We're going to take off our brake pads, put it to the side for now. Same thing over here, off to the side. And this is the mounting hardware that actually holds the brake pad into the knuckle. You just pull this like this and it comes right off. Same thing on the bottom one, just pull it and it comes right off. And Inside here, if you have a significant amount of rust in there, you'll need to clean that out. This one is nice and clean. We're not going to worry about it. But if there was a lot of rust in there, you would take a file or a piece of emery cloth and you would just clean this up in here. Now you're just taking off the rust. You're not filing down the metal, just the rust. Same thing on this side here. Just a little bit. We don't need to do that here because it's clean. All right? We're going to put our hardware on now. And the hardware just goes over the top like this. And you push it. Make sure it's pushed in here. All the way right in here so you don't have any issues. Same thing here. Take it over the top. And just push it down. And you'll see it snaps in. And just again push it in right there okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these slide pins out right here you just take them like this 
you hold the rubber back and you take and pull out the pin itself. We're going to wipe these off. Tough to do with two hands. We're going to wipe this with one hand actually. We wipe this off. Now you remember this brake, this has got brake fluid on it. I mean, sorry, brake cleaner on it. And we're going to take a little bit of the synthetic brake grease that we use. We're going to paint it on the outside like this. And then we're going to take it and put it back in the same location that it came out. And you want to make sure that that little O-ring right there pops back up on the shaft of the slide pin where it's supposed to. See, in that little area right there. Next thing we'll do now is take this one out. We're going to wipe it down. Get that grease off of there. We're going to put just a little bit on here. I'm going to point this out to you too. You see this one has got the rubber on there? That's why you want to do one pin at a time because you want that going back in the same location it came out of. You don't want to put grease on this end of it over here, just on this portion here. And you take it and you push it back in and turn it and rotate it and it pushes right in. Now remember that, that ring that I told you about? You'll see it pops right up on there like that. See? Okay. Next thing we're going to do, every place that the brake pad touches has got to be lubricated. Just like that. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. Okay, now I'm just going to put this down for one second. I'll explain something else to you. As you can see, these are the old brake pads that came off the car. Now you see how this brake pad here, they look the same as this one? You always want to make sure that the indicators are in the correct location. These indicators, they're mirror images. These, the pads for the other side has this indicator on this side. So you don't want to mix them up. You want to put the one with the indicator in the back in the same location that, that it came off. All right, now you can see in the back here, you see there's a little bit of rusting taking place right there. So we're going to lubricate the back of the caliper piston before we put it back in so we can minimize that. All right. Now, you can put the brake pads in on the on the, the bench it's a little bit easier than trying to do it once it's back in the car so I usually put them in just like like this and it holds it in place and we'll do the exact same thing on this side see that's how they go now we'll take the caliper mounting bracket and put it over the top of the rotor and then we're going to squeeze the brake pads together, like that. And then we're going to take the two bolts that we previously removed, and we're going to catch them both. Before we tighten it up, we're going to catch them both. And now we'll tighten up the bolts that hold the uh, mounting bracket in. Okay, we'll tighten them down. Now we snug them down. We are going to get in here with a torque wrench and torque these two caliper. Uh, hold down for the bracket here. We're going to talk these down later, but for now I'm just going to tighten this up and then I'll go look it up. All right, so let me uh, let me look up the torque specs. I'm going to torque them and then we'll come right back. Okay, now once they're torqued in there, we're going to take our caliper and we're going to take. And we talked about that that synthetic grease. We're going to lubricate the piston just a little bit like this and then we're going to lubricate every place that the brake pad touches which is right here 
and we'll take the caliper and put it over the brake pad. We're going to push these slide pins back in and then we're going to catch our two 14 millimeter bolts, catching them both by hand before you tighten it up with a wrench. Otherwise, if you tighten this one, this one may not line up properly. So make sure they're both tight, uh, caught by hand before you tighten it up. All right now, sometimes when you tighten up, sometimes when you tighten up that 14 millimeter pin right there, this slide pin rotates. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get in here with a with a thin wrench just to hold it like that while we snug this down nice and tight. Same thing up top right here. Okay, let's talk about what we did here, and uh, this job is then finished. Okay, what we did is we, uh, we cleaned up the face where the rotor is fitting onto the hub here. We cleaned off all of that rust that was on there. We reattached these two bolts right here. We tightened them in as tight as we could. We then mounted our mounting bracket back on. We tightened up our two 17 millimeter bolts to the top as well as the one down on the bottom over here. We installed our new brake hardware. We lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch, like this. We lubricated everywhere here. We installed the, uh, the bolts in the back up here, those 14 millimeter bolts on the back of the, the uh, caliper into the bracket. We made sure that they're tight here and here, and that's it. And this, we held this with a wrench so it didn't rotate. All right, so, okay, so that's it. You're all set, all right? Um, main thing is before you get in the car and drive it, you want to get in the vehicle, pump the brake pedal several times to bring that brake pedal back on top. As you're going to notice, when you step on the pedal, it's going to go right to the floor. That's why you want to pump it a couple of times, and that's a normal thing. What happens is the piston itself that you push back in with that tool is now back in the bore as far as it can go, and you need to apply the brakes several times to get that piston back out so it's actually contacting the back of the brake pads that you put in and it actually when the pads are in here like this that pistons back over here it needs to push itself all the way back up to here so that's why your pedal drops down to the floor for uh, the first three or four pumps of the pedal as always thanks for watching see you on the next one